Persona 5 Royal is the definitive version of Persona 5. Hey gamers, it's me Chanel Binando and welcome to my review of Persona 5 Royal, the revamped version of Persona 5 from Atlas released in 2016. This game was a hell of a journey, it actually took me 140 hours to complete, which is, you know, kind of why this review is a bit late, sorry. I just had to experience everything this game had to offer, the story, the characters, the art design, I'll go through everything, I'm gonna keep it spoiler free, so please don't be concerned. Even though the base game and narrative doesn't really change too much from the 2016 version, I still don't want to spoil it for any newcomers or anyone who wants to return to Persona 5 and, and wants a fresh perspective based on the new content they've added, and they've added quite a lot. The first thing Atlas revamped dramatically was the story of Persona 5. While in itself really good, a story about a young man who gets wrongly accused of a crime and sent to high school in Japan, there he unlocks the ability to wield his persona, hence the name. You'll still gather a ragtag group of teenage outcasts and to, to form the Phantom Thieves themselves and steal the corrupt hearts, distorted desires of adults who plague society and victimize teenagers. You could consider Royal to be kind of akin to a director's cut. This game adds more scenes, expands on characters greatly. Simple things like adding Noir into the series earlier so that way she doesn't just seemingly appear out of random. To greatly expanding on certain characters like Goro Kechi, aka your rival. In the previous game he was a side character that only interacted with you at set points of the story. He's since been upgraded to a full on NPC and confidant in no large part to the fact that he's now more integral than ever to the base story. You can check out his competitive side at the Billiards Club. He'll introduce you to the new Jazz Club in Kojiji. Kojo, 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 the new social space. You'll even be able to see who can last the longest in a friendly rivalry in one of Japan's public bathhouses. Persona 5 Royale also introduces two new characters in the form of Dr. Maruki and Kasumi Yoshizawa. Oh my god, I said their names right. These characters aren't just tacked on, nor are they only reserved for the new Royale-only content, they're actually interwoven quite naturally into the base game line story. New events, cutscenes, and social interactions were created and voice acted in order to introduce these characters better. And Atlas did a, a terrific job. Dr. Maruki in particular was one of my favorite in the standout. He's added in as the school counselor after the events of the first palace and the, the abuse the students suffer from their old gym teacher. Not only is his new confidant branch really interesting as it deals more with cognitive science, which is Persona's pseudoscience mixed with psychology that revolves around the metaverse and cognition and play the game, you see what I mean. He was actually so well inserted into the story guys that I almost forgot for a long period of time that he was one of the DLC characters. The other is Kusumi Yoshizawa, she's added as a new phantom thief and playable character, or kind of. Introduced in the revised prologue as a new Persona user, Kasumi is a transfer student that comes around to Shujin at the same time you do and you two become fast friends after an incident on the train. As a confidant, side character and possible romance option, she is an absolutely phenomenal character. I really enjoyed her story arc and she's deeply tied to the new third semester. However, as a playable character and new member of the Phantom Thieves, and yes, I do have to use air quotations, she's kind of relegated to the Green Ranger role. Like I said, straight away in the prologue, you see her even mention that she's not really a Phantom Thief. Aside from her personal story, this is actually the weakest part of Persona 5 Royal's new narratives. Her entry as a new member of the Phantom Thieves is very jarring and greater emphasizes one of the biggest problems with the base game, the third act, or the original third act. What makes Persona 5's story so great is, is the fact that these teenagers dealing with the real world consequences of their actions as Phantom Thieves and the trauma of these corrupt adults. That the, Each one of the villains or palace rulers that you face in the game is somehow deeply connected to one of the characters. And this makes for some great character driven storytelling, again until the third act. All I'll say is that Kasumi's role in the third act really emphasizes that this is a revision or a director's cut rather than a full standalone game. While Atlas really went out of their way to fix the first two acts and add so much more new content and nuance to the story, the game overall is still burdened by the third act and unfortunately it doesn't seem like they did a lot to fix this until the third semester. I'm not going to show any footage so don't worry about spoilers. All I will say is this was really really well handled. This could have been just some cheesy tacked on filler arc type content and it really wasn't. It felt more like a 
one of these new canonical anime movies or even a second season. But it's not just the story that Persona 5 Royal tries to fix, it also tries to do a lot new with the gameplay. At its core, Persona 5 Royal is one part social sim, one part JRPG. Most of the action will take place in the metaverse, a fictional mindscape or alternate dimension where, where hidden personalities, desires and dreams take form. As mentioned before, combat is turn-based, but also very well done in the sense that yes, you have magic facilitated by your personas, and yes, you do have your standard melee attacks and items to help you. You also have unique things like ranged weapons and baton passes. Ranged weapons in particular have been revamped in Royale. They now gain ammo after every battle, so you don't have to go and restock. And then there's the one more system linked to the baton pass. Whether getting a critical hit on an enemy or hitting them with one of their weaknesses, you'll knock them down and trigger the one more system. Or you can choose to baton pass, that is, pass your turn over to the next character, giving them a damage boost. Persona 5 Royal adds something new to both of these features. Not only are guns now reloaded after every battle, but the baton pass can now be upgraded with the new darts minigame. Not only is this a great way to level up your confidant ranks with your new characters, this also improves the gameplay drastically, as this allows you to recover health and SP without actually using in-game items. This really helps the flow of battle as one of the complaints of Persona 5 was the fact that sometimes being in the metaverse could be quite a slog. Palaces as a whole have been revamped. Always have they been linked to the story and the narrative in a really interesting way. Tied directly to the palaces themselves is Joker's new grappling hook. Not only is this linked directly to finding the brand new will seeds in game, it also sort of could becomes a signature move. It's used in his ultimate attacks. You can now ambush enemies from afar and also use it to traverse the palaces a lot faster. Honestly, it was really weird to remember that Joker didn't have this before because this is now part of his core arsenal. Not only that, it really does give him his own flair, whereas before it was kind of a very generic character. Speaking of ultimate moves and signature attacks, Persona 5 Royal also adds show times. Different from the already pre-established all-out attack system, You'll trigger these at specific points such as Joker having low health or an enemy being inflicted with an ailment. Two characters will team up in a wacky pop culture reference super move that does a ton of damage. And to be honest, they're really, really fun. They have multiple lines of dialogue and once you unlock them, honestly, again, I don't see how this couldn't be a part of the original game. Mementos has also been drastically revamped and a new side character called Jose is introduced. Now he has his own separate little side story, although that's not his main purpose. He acts as a new vendor and NPC inside Mementos. Not only will he allow you to buy things while you're there, allowing you greater freedom of exploration and the ability to restock without actually advancing time. He can also upgrade the amount of money and XP you earn whilst in Mementos making it much, much easier to level up. In fact, I even hit the level cap of 99 because of this. We can't just talk about dungeon crawling, mementos, and combat in Persona, as the main core feature of the series is the social sim aspect. This too has also been greatly fixed inside Persona 5, as you now have more time to hang out with your confidence, do part-time jobs, study for school, or even just hang out at the gym. A new social space is introduced in Code... Code... Kijiji... Kijiji... It, it'll be written here that isn't just new vendors but also places to hang out as i mentioned before you can now play darts with your teammates in order to level up their confidant ranks boost your social skills and also unlock new abilities this is directly linked to the time management mechanic inside persona 5 royal and the thing that i had the biggest problem with every activity i just mentioned will eat up an allotted amount of time throughout the day each day is broken up to sections of early morning in class daytime after school evening leaving you with only one or two activities you can do now this may seem like a lot but when you have to explore mementos speak to your confidants to learn more things or unlock new abilities for them or just progress the story this can become incredibly stressful However, as I did discover, Persona 5 does fix this by adding a lot more time. In fact, in the final two months of the game, I literally had nothing to do. I just started hanging out at Akibara's maid cafes, uh, fully leveling up myself at the gym just to see what would happen, or meditating at the new temple in Kojijo. D did I just say it right? So if that put you off the first time, then honestly, it's been greatly fixed. Next, that brings me to the audio of the game. Now, the audio of the game is absolutely phenomenal. It's this jazz, upbeat, high tempo music. And you may have seen in my Phantom Thieves edition unboxing, they've actually added 10 new tracks to the soundtrack, including a new intro. 
She's possibly playing right now. Honestly, the music is so catchy that in my day-to-day -day life, I actually started hearing it in my head, but that also might be because of how long I actually spent playing it every day. The voice acting in this game is superb and has actually been redone or relocalized. Some of the more awkward translations the first time around have been revisited as most, if not all, of the voice actors were brought back. And as somebody who prefers anime in subs rather than dubs, I actually found the dub version very, very enjoyable and easy to listen to. Normally I find that Japanese personalities just don't translate well to English. I know this is sometimes difficult for anime fans to understand, but as somebody who speaks multiple languages, to hear somebody say a phrase that only makes sense in their native tongue in English sometimes be very, very awkward. One of my main concerns was Ryuji, and actually he is, despite being, you know, the stereotypical Japanese delinquent that doesn't really translate well into English, he's actually really well voice acted, probably one of the best ones. Although, if you want a true immersive experience, I do recommend playing it in Japanese, as obviously this takes place in Tokyo, and there are times where they oddly reference the fact that they go to speak to foreigners and they're speaking English, and you got that awkward thing where they're saying in English that, oh, I don't understand English. Uh, or they use, you know, Japanese honorifics. Yeah, you know, not everything translates. Just from a technical standpoint, Persona 5 looks better than the original game. It is designed to be enhanced by the PS4 Pro. They pulled character models from Persona 5 Dancing in Starlight and the new Scramble game that's coming out soon. You could tell with characters, especially like Kasumi, that they either did some motion capture this time around or they went to town on the animation. I could go on for hours about the art style. This is so stylistic, it's amazing. And one of the best features is actually going to the new Thieves Den and checking out all the concept art or rewatching the animated cutscenes. They are fully animated cutscenes, not just pulled from the Persona 5, the animation. They're actually new ones inserted here specifically, including a revised ending. Another nice touch is the fact that characters will now not only just call you and check up on you, making conversations much more natural and also a lot easier to level up your confidants, but they'll also send you photos on your smartphone, which kind of, you know, makes sense. This is how teenagers interact these days with Instagram, Snapchat. And seeing as how large the game is, is actually a really nice way to commemorate some of the events. Like this one in particular, here is, you know, the typical anime beach episode type uh, part of the game. And you can see Anne took a photo, she sends it to you, and uh, you know, it's a nice touch, it's a nice touch. Guys, this game was absolutely humongous, and despite the little nitpicks I had here and there about, you know, the third act of the original game, or how Kasumi's introduced as a Persona user, or the time management mechanics, which really played on my head because of the fact, you know, of trying to get this review out in time, I actually literally started seeing, like, the freaking, the, the clock thing, yeah, that, go over, you know, my head, breaking up my day-to-day. -day. I'd still highly recommend this, and I give this game a 5 out of 5 for brand new players. Definitely pick up this version of the game. Don't bother with Persona 5, the, the base one. This is an experience. I platinum this, because of course I did, on my first playthrough. And I'm not someone to replay games, and I'm probably gonna do a new game plus. For those of you returning or who have beaten Persona 5, I would say that I'd give this possibly a four out of five. It's still a phenomenal game, and I definitely think if you're a fan of the series, you should pick it up. But what I will say is the main problems you had with the base game are still going to be there in terms of bosses or story narrative parts. I think I've harped on enough about the third act, but that's just my opinion. Let me know in the comments down below. Do you agree with my Nando nitpicks? Are you going to be picking up the game? Did you play it originally or did you wait for Persona 5 Royal? I want to say a big shout out and thank you to Altus West and, and, and Sega for giving me a review code, even though I was still late because I did absolutely every freaking thing in this game. And don't forget to check out some of my other Persona 5 videos or subscribe because I'll be doing guides and other reviews in the future. Anyways, guys, I've got to go. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.